Well, good afternoon. Nice to be here. As you can see, I'm wearing my motorboard. So I'm going to give you a little lecture. Now, I said in one of my previous videos that I would talk about each unit in my shortwave system, why it was there, how to operate it, etc., etc. So I think today we'll talk about the artificial ground unit by MFJ. Now let us assume that you bought a portable shortwave. You got into the hobby and you thought this is a nice hobby, I like this. I'm going to buy a tabletop receiver, a base receiver. So that's going to entail putting up some kind of external antenna, be that long wire antenna, dipole, whatever. Normally most people start off with a long wire antenna, but whatever antenna you put up, you're going to want to ground your system, earth your system. Now there are various reasons why you'd want to earth your system. There are reasons I won't go into because they're dealing with transmitting and we're only dealing with receiving. We just receive only. But one of the reasons you'd want to earth your system, particularly with a long wire antenna or a large antenna, is for safety reasons, for lightning strikes, <coughs> electrical storms. That's one reason why you'd want to earth your antenna and your system. And another reason you'd want to earth your system, ground your system, is to remove as much of the hash on your receive as possible. Now with the advent of modern electronics, shortwave radio is very prone to picking up a lot of hash. Everything from power supply units to battery chargers to lighting systems to modern street lighting to phone chargers, goodness knows what. They all give off RFI, radio frequency interference, which you can pick up on your shortwave, particularly if you live in a built-up area, city, town, village. You know, if you're lucky enough to live in the countryside, it's probably not going to be too much a problem. Noise on your receive. But if you live in a built-up area, such as me, it's a considerable problem. So, to help with that, you want to ground your system. Now, there is various ways you can ground your system. Some people put copper plates in the ground and run a wire from that back to their receive. Some people put wires under their lawn. I've known people to do that. And connect that back to their receiving system. Some people put a straight rod down in the ground. And have a clamp on the top of it. The wire goes to the clamp and then back to the receiver. That's what I use. A rod that's sunk deep into the ground. It's deep as I can get it and there's a clamp on the top and my ground wire comes from that back to my receive. Now as regards to the ground wire you need to keep this ground wire as short as you can get it. It needs to be as short as you can keep it 
because if it's too long, what will happen is that basically you will get a negative effect. So instead of your ground wire taking the hash and sending it into your ground rod and into earth and taking it away from your receive, if it's too long, it will do the opposite. It will pick up the hash and it will send it to your receive. And you can notice this by disconnecting your ground wire and then connecting it and looking at the meter on your receiver. You will see it jump up. That will tell you for sure your connecting wire is too long. Now I've been reading up on this and doing a lot of research on this and there's not really an optimum length for a ground wire between your radio and your earth it very much depends on what frequency you're listening um, there was I noticed on when I looked online there was calculations for this and um, equations for this and one thing I did notice was that you um, keep coming up with the same thing kept arising whatever I looked at online and read, read up on this what kept cropping up was a quarter wave a quarter wave and there was equations and it was I'm not mathematically minded to be honest with you I'm not that technically minded but it was length of your ground wire divided by frequency or frequency divided by length of your ground wire or it was equations like that you get what I mean and because you've got a certain length of ground wire and you're on a certain frequency it, it adds up to this quarter wave and what happens is that the ground wire doesn't take the noise away from your receiver and into earth it acts as an antenna and it then picks up the noise amplifies the noise sends it to your receiver which is not what you want it's the opposite of what you want and i found this before i had the artificial grounding unit i found this on some frequencies my receive was better with the ground wire some frequencies there was no difference on other frequencies i'd hook it up and you see the needle jump up on my receiver it's increasing the noise and the hash that's because it's too long and at these particular frequencies it must be making that quarter wave they keep referring to and it's acting as a receiver the wire is acting as a antenna receiving the hash and shoving it up into your receiver which is not what you want so you've got to keep that wire between your receiver and your ground rod or your whatever you put into the ground you got to keep it as short as possible now i read this was by a radio amateur i think he was more alluding to transmitting than just receiving but it's a good maxim to bear in mind he said whoever this person was he said at 28 megahertz even an eight foot ground wire to your earth can cause you problems. Now eight feet is I don't think that's very long, but it's too long for our purposes, obviously. So bearing that in mind, you want it at least eight foot or less, I'm sure. Now my ground wire was just over 15 feet. I got it with somewhere. 
yeah, 15 feet 8 inches was my ground wire. Now I could, when I hooked it up to my receiver, I could notice a drop in, a drop in the hash, and you see the needle go back, up to about 5 megahertz. Above 5 megahertz, there was no change. <clears throat> That's because I was using the grounding unit, so there was no change above 5 megahertz. It just didn't make any difference whether I had the grounding wire connected or not connected. There, 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 there was no change. But 5 megahertz and below, there's a considerable difference. But knowing what I know and what I read, 15 foot 8 inches of earth wire was far too long. So I managed to move my receiver into the corner of the living room, as you'll see in a minute. And I managed to remove 5 foot 5 inches of grinding wire. So it's now 10 foot 3 inches. Still, for my liking, too long. But there's a noticeable difference. I can now notice a difference on the meter up to about 10 megahertz. There's less hash. So, it strikes me, being, being just a layman, but it strikes me as shorten it by 5 feet you jump up 5 megahertz it's a noticeable um, difference on the meter so if I shortened it by another 5 feet which I can't do for reasons I'll tell you in a minute but if I shortened it by another 5 feet bearing in mind that I can get a noticeable difference up to about 10 megahertz. If I shortened it by another 5 feet, would I then go to a noticeable difference at 15 feet, uh, 15 megahertz? I think I probably would. I can sort of see a pattern emerging. But I hear you say, <coughs> how do I manage when I live in a first floor apartment or a block of flats. Well that's where the grounding unit comes in, the MFJ grounding unit comes in. That'll help you enormously um, help combat an earthing cable that's too long or it'll let you make what they call a counterpoise where you don't actually have a rod in the ground you can just run a cable from the um, grounding unit run it all the way around the living room or something and that can help, they call that a counterpoise and it all helps to reduce the hash and the noise on your receive because that's the thing about this game is it's like a um, balancing act. It's like you have a seesaw. Let me put my tea down a minute. You have a seesaw. And on one end you have signals and on the other end you have hash. Now you want to do the maximum to get your signals up and also the maximum to get your hash down you've got to get it to go like that so the way you can get signals up is yeah put up an outside antenna uh, use a good receiver use good cabling if you're using coax make sure you use good coax etc 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 
and a way to get the hash down, as I'll show you in a minute, is to earth out your system. Now everything you put in your system, in my case I have an antenna tuning unit, I have a noise cancelling unit, I have the earthing unit, and also the receiver. They all have connections on the back for earthing. <coughs> so all my units are connected to the earthing unit with things like this. That's actually made for the automotive industry. It's actually for a car. But they're ideal for what we want. For an earth strap, a nice earth strap. There's your hole for your connection. Most of these things will have a stud coming out with a butterfly nut on it. So you just hook it on, tighten the butterfly nut. The only one that doesn't have that is my receiver that has a little spring clip with a little hole in it. So obviously that ends no good. So what I did was I took one of those, take off the yellow plastic piece, and in this end I soldered a little pin, it's actually a little panel pin which I soldered in. Now you can, with some washers in between, you can nut and bolt, bolt them together. Your pin goes into your receiver. This end goes on to your earthing unit and you're good to go. To connect my earthing unit to outside, my ground wire, It is this stuff, proper earthing cable, and it's clamped onto my rod which goes into the ground. If you were going to make a counterpoise, you could just run a load of this around the living room or around your shack or something, back to your grounding unit. So that's how you hook everything up. That's why you hook everything up. So I'll turn the camera around and I'll show you the MFJ artificial ground and I'll show you the difference it makes. See you in a moment. Right, back with you again. Now here is our artificial ground unit by MFJ 931. As you can see it has three controls on it sensitivity, inductance and capacitance. Now the sensitivity and the meter we've no need to worry about at all because they are for transmitting. But our inductance and our capacitance are what we will, what we will use for receive only. So whatever frequency you are on you take your inductance and set it to find the lowest reading on your signal meter on your receiver. And then you can further tune it with your capacitance. It's a bit of a um, suck it and see I guess you could say. You've got to sort of fiddle with it to find the lowest reading on your signal meter. <clears throat> so if I show you my signal meter, hopefully I can show you my signal meter, there we go, now if I move the com inductance, you can see it start to jump up, and if I move the capacitance, you see the signals now jumping into the red, just jumping into the red. There you go, move it back down. Now, if I disconnect the grounding unit entirely, watch the meter on the receiver. Watch the needle.
bit fiddly to unhook this. Now you see the difference. We're up into the red on the meter. That's the difference grounding at your station makes. Quite a considerable dis difference. And I'll turn the volume up on the receiver. I'll reconnect the ground wire. And I think you'll hear a difference on the noise level. There, we are now back down to a lower level of noise. Now, the further up the frequency scale you go, the less of a noticeable difference there is on reduction on the meter with this unit. That's because the further up the frequency scale you go, the shorter your ground wire between your receiver and your grounding post needs to be. That's my own personal theory on it. A radio amateur may tell me different, but I believe to get a much more noticeable reduction on noise further up the frequency scale, I'd need to shorten my ground wire considerably. It's at about, um, what did I say my ground wire was? About 10 feet or something, isn't it? 10 foot 3 inches. So it needs to be lower than that, but there's no way I can make it any lower. But you see, or at least I hope you can see, the difference you can make simply by grounding out your station, not only for safety reasons with um, lightning strikes and so forth, <coughs> but also in reduction of noise on your receive. Let me just twist that capacitance again, you'll see the difference. There you go. And twist it back down. That's actually not a great, um, <clears throat> not a great meter for showing you this. Actually, it's better with a meter with a proper needle on it. But you get the idea anyway. But like I say, the further up the scale I go, the less noticeable the reduction is, because my ground wire is still too long. But this. There you go. This unit is certainly a help, certainly a help and well worth getting if you want to ground out your station and you've got a long grounding wire. It's certainly worth getting, certainly worth doing. But however you can do it, if you can do it, ground out your station. It's well worth doing. So there you go. I hope you've learned a little something from this video and we will see you on the next one.